machete in the house with the USA jerseys up in the back. Where's the Slight flex. Slight flex. There it is. Woo! <laughs> hey, I need, I need a, I need some of that. We, we need to do a giveaway. I have a lot of USA stuff. Like, I, I, we need to get. We need to do a giveaway. So we do need to do a giveaway, man. You, you know, people go crazy for that stuff. Like, yeah, I want to I wanna pick like some few stuff, in your stuff. Give away this. What? What do we got? Um. What? Oh, yeah. You, now you got to keep that, fam. <laughs> <laughs> and I have your stuff locked up here. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, Very yeah, cool. They look, they look so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. What um damn, what's your favorite possession on that like whole shrine? What's your favorite piece? Um it was this before. The Olympic trials one from mm. yeah, that was because you have the team and stuff. Now it's back to this. Yeah. And then I love these bridges, the Cooper River Bridge thing. I have two of them. Are you going back to that next year, or is it like you're not racing I, roads? Focus on 2020. Uh, now I don't have. I don't wanna do indoors for sure. And then if I do cross country and one road race, either get river run or down or both of them. But I don't have to chase a standard. I don't have to do anything. So just wait for the Olympic trials. Are you gonna do get river run? I may do it. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Cause I um I probably will be there. With uh, with Artigan. Yeah, I'll be there for May in March, March fifteen, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't checked. Well, cool. Yeah. I'll make this quick. I appreciate your time. I really wanted to do this actually like a couple of days ago in in New York. Um, yeah. But uh, between being busy and your schedule and ours, uh, I didn't get around to it. I just wanted again put the camera in your face uh, and kind of recap briefly. We won't hold you up, but. Um, We'll start with the actual, with the USA 5K championships. Heading into this race, obviously, you race to compete and you race to win. So, and you could tell by the start of the race, you and Stanley were out fast. Um, yeah. Did you feel like you, uh, that it was going to come back to you? Because last year, y'all pulled away and no one came back. Um, yeah. Well, did you feel like the, the pack was going to catch you or what happened this year? I didn't know they were they're gonna come that quick, but you know, looking back at the season, that's been a long season compared to last year. So you never know what's gonna happen in the race. I was good, I was feeling good, but I started feeling crappy after 1.5 miles, and I was like, you know, let me just hold on for my dear life. And you know, they got me, and you know, I'm proud of those guys. They are fit, they are strong. You know, Antonio, of course, is really strong and tough. So yeah, I'm proud of them, and you know. I what I did there, I don't I don't go play. I don't wanna give an excuse for that. I gave all everything I had. No, no, of course. Yeah, you yeah. always run to your best yeah. ability. Uh, but yeah. you won't sit here and say that you did actually have a very long season. Most people were done after Doha. Uh, yeah. and you you kept going for what was almost a, an extra three, four weeks. Um, yeah. What do you typically do? When during those three to four weeks, because obviously training at the highest level, I mean, when you're training for worlds, you do a strong peak for yeah. um, like Doha. Yeah. So you come off Doha. What do you do? What do you do in those three weeks? Do you still like do fast interval work, or do you do like tempos, or do you like how do you like carry a a, a peak for like almost another month? Uh, after Doha, you know, of course, we went back to Vienna and basically we didn't do anything. We were just joking in the morning, you know, running. Oh that was a week, a week, a week before Ineos, you know. So we were just chilling, um, practicing the formation and stuff. And yeah, basically we didn't do a lot of, we didn't do any workout between Doha and Ineos. So, so it was just a matter of waiting for that race to come in the morning of Saturday. Yeah, so you were just, uh, okay. That must have been yeah. hard then. Traveling to yeah. Vienna, being a part of Sub Two, um, and then traveling back, probably back to Colorado, doing yeah. a couple workouts, just trying to maintain fitness to the best of your ability, and then hopping in uh, New York. Um, well, cool. Yeah, yeah. Moving into 2020, obviously it's an Olympic year. It's the only thing track and field uh, really gets 
mass exposure for, unlike the Super Bowl or the World Series that come annually. What is your, uh, what's the big focus? Um, obviously making the team, but do you have any other goals besides making Tokyo in 2020? Um, like you say, everything is geared towards the Olympic trials and the Olympics. So anything in between is just a matter of preparation. But yeah, my main aim is that Olympic trials, you know, and make to Olympics. I wanna for sure, you know, what I wanna do is improve of what I've been doing for the on the past Olympics. I was 16, which was not good, but this time I wanna just, you know, yeah, do really good on that. So, so is are you gonna do just 10k again? Or do you plan on doing a double, or what's your plan? Or what's uh, your plan? I haven't talked with I haven't talked with my coach. We have a meeting like sometimes next week after my um, my time off, so we haven't decided anything for sure. But for sure, I love to do the thing, so I don't know about the five k for now. So how you you competed in quite a few of world championships? Yeah, 2016, 2017, or I know you've done you did London. Uh, now Doha, uh, obviously, you are one of the favorites to go to Doha to um, Tokyo for the 10K. But there comes a point, and probably in your career, where making the Olympics or making a world team isn't exciting for you. It's like winning a medal, a gold, a silver, or a bronze. But once you're at that level, some of these athletes are like if you're not closing incredibly fast, because even someone like yourself, who I would say maybe more as a time trialer, you're, you're very quick, uh, yeah. 27 0, 10 KPR, but these top three people, um, how do you go from being a top 10, top 15 in the world to top three and being able to close on the last lap, last two laps in a 10 K to potentially medal? Oh, like you say now, like, you know, that's my limitation that I've been having for the past, you know, the teams I've made, you know, I've been always with these guys, you know, you saw in um, Ireland in 2017, they left me like almost two laps to go. I didn't have that closing speed. And yeah, that's what, that's the, that's the, that's what I'm going to work on it this year for sure. I don't know what I'm going to do, but that's the main thing I'm going to work on it this year, you know. Because yeah. they always leave me at the end of the race, like 1,500 to go, a mile to go and stuff like that. So, yeah. So I'm going to sit down with my coach and see, you know, what what workouts or what specific race will help me close fast in those championships. Because those guys go, they go really quick on, you know, the last part of the race. And, you know, they, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Even uh, Safan Hassan, I think, that ran her last yeah. mile in 412 or last 1500 and 359 and um, yeah it's impressive you know i i like you know i like the way those guys close you know but i want to be with them in future you know that's what i'm gonna focus on 2020 but the first thing is to make that olympic team you know how, it, how true. crazy it is. true you know i don't know how, yeah it's it's important to make that team first but yeah you know like i told you you know i want to work on that closing speed you know a mile out on that on the race so what um it's not, I don't feel like chasing American records is as big of a deal um, to the individual athletes as much as it is to fans uh, who love to American record and world record attempts, obviously, because it doesn't always fall within their schedule, um, specifically at the longer distance, because 10K takes a lot out of you. What, is there any, 10k American record attempt and now especially with no um Doha Diamond League um events do you feel like you'll ever make an attempt to chase the 10k American record like you see now they don't have 10k's now in Diamond Leagues and there's no major 10k now where people can go four times so it's gonna be really hard but I wish I could get that opportunity train for it and go for it but yeah that's, crazy. Uh, that's yeah. crazy because you're what, tw- and I'm pretty sure it's Galen Rupp who holds the record in 26 yeah. 34. Um, and you went 27 0 something. Um, yeah. Do you feel like it's within your reach? Everything is possible, man. Like the, what Chuck is saying, no human is limited. Like, no, you, yeah. you, if you believe on it, you, you're going to get it. Like, he's a human being and he broke that record. He has that record and records are meant to be broken. But yeah. 
you know, if there is that, if I get a good training and get a good race with good pacemakers, you know, I'm going to give a shot on it. But for now, you know, I don't know. They don't have good races, you know. 10K is almost an extreme race, so it's just going to be. If, um, if someone actually put the race together and did a dedicated, like, 10K, kind of like Nike did with the, the 5K and um, where Woody Kincaid went sub-13 and, like, Lopez and Matt Centrowitz went 13 minutes as well. Um, yeah. If someone put a dedicated 10K, super fast, perfect conditions, would you be willing to make an attempt at it? If, or is that something you obviously have to talk to with your coach? But um, it, do you not even care in an Olympic year? Um, for now, for sure, it's not, you know, it's not, you know, my goals. Everything is geared towards the Olympics. And, you know, what matters is to make the Olympic team and co players are that are running fast times in the Olympics. It's going to be really tough to do that, both to run fast and, to make Olympic team and to run good in Olympics. So it's going to be really hard for that for next cool. year. So, yeah. All right. So you just finished USA's. You're taking a break. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure you said you're going to take about a week off. Uh, three weeks around there. Yeah. I'll week, see. Week, three weeks, two weeks, three weeks. What do you, uh, what does some, a professional runner do like yourself during this time off? Do you like, do you actually change your eating habits? Do you eat a, like a ton of ice cream? Do you like, what is something that you don't do um, during off season that you, or sorry, that you do in season that you now can do during off season? Uh, as we speak now, I've had two burgers since I left New York, so I'm enjoying it. Yesterday with Elvin, and yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing, man, with sweet potato fries and stuff. So I don't I don't live in myself now. I don't care. I eat everything I want. I drink okay. burgers. I, I eat all the junk food, pizza, and everything. So oh, awesome. I'm, I'm not worried about the weight gain. So I, I, it's not a big deal on me. It's not a okay. big deal on me. Yeah, so I eat everything I want. Because I know when I start training and running, getting serious, I won't see them anymore. So so what's, uh, what's Elvin doing right now? Because she's running really, really well. Yeah, she is. She is she's running really well. So she is now, I, I believe she's training for Houston now. Okay. Yeah. That's what she's training for now. Very good. Yeah. yeah. All right, Shad. I'm going to let you bounce. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry I couldn't catch you up in, uh, in New York. Definitely always appreciate the love. And uh, hopefully we'll be out there in uh, Denver in the next few months to get awesome content. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Chris. Thank you.